From economics to the arts to activism and filmmaking, award-winning artist and documentary filmmaker Angus MacDonald uses his art and lens to keep compelling focus on issues that many are uncomfortable to talk about. Freedom is Beautiful follows the journey of two extraordinary Kurdish refugees, Fahad Bandesh and Mustafa Azimitaba, who were finally freed from detention after being in prison for almost eight years under Australia's brutal offshore processing regime. Freedom is Beautiful will be screening at the Melbourne Documentary Film Festival on July 29. Angus MacDonald, thank you so much and welcome to the For Your Reference podcast. Oh, thank you so much, Kay. It's a pleasure to be here talking with you. Absolutely. Well, um, it's been so great to get to know your work, um, you know, whether it be art, whether it be activism. I would love to, um, I guess, start off with, you know, what art means to you and what you hope your art does to the world. Huh, that's a big question. Big question, yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> I'll softball the rest, it's okay. <laughs> uh, well, I guess, you know, I've been an artist for almost 30 years. Mm-hmm. Um, a painter mostly. Mm-hmm. I've only recently begun working with video and film about five years ago, but yep. I guess the answer to that question for me is that, you know, all art is a form of storytelling. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't really matter what medium you're using, music or poetry or painting, yeah. uh, filmmaking, all they are are uh, um, stories. Mm-hmm. And um, I guess since I began looking at certain uh social issues in our society they wanted to get engaged with with my art Mm -hmm. my my stories have changed a little bit you know whereas previously I was doing I guess art that was more um one-dimensional in the sense that I was just trying to create things of beauty and consider Mm -hmm. those questions I guess I've moved into an area where I'm trying to talk about and tell stories about bigger issues that impact us all as a society and and through that hopefully make some sort of contribution towards uh, positively impacting society. Yeah, and I I think that's the interesting about art. There's the technical sort of angle where, you know, making sure that you're getting everything right or getting that sort of (laughs) accolades within the industry, but then it's also making sure that you're, you're feeling as well as everyone else that's feeling um, and I would love to hear about your journey into activism and specifically in regards to asylum seekers, because if we have the time, that's not <laughs> necessarily something that this country is, you know, comfortable talking about. But I would like to hear specifically, um, you know, where that came to be and where you felt this needs to be something and this is art. Well, I, 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 think, it, I think a whole lot of accidents um are really the explanation for that i you know when i left art school a long time ago i spent my first six years um out after art school painting in greece on a small island yeah um and which was an incredible time of my life and um then fast forwarding to 2016 mm-hmm. i just had my 30th exhibition uh, I've been painting full time for about 20 years and I really uh, wanted to take a step back and think about what I was doing with my practice. Mm-hmm. And it happened to coincide with the, a major uh, migrant crisis that happened in Europe in 2015, 2016, with a million uh, migrants crossing the Mediterranean from Turkey uh, into Greece, uh, including the island that I lived on all those years ago. And friends of mine there had told me all about what had happened and thousands of people arriving every day up up and down islands in the eastern Aegean. So I had this time on my hands and I was thinking about my practice. So I traveled over there and went to my island plus a lot of other islands that were were um very, very big uh um in terms of daily arrivals, including an island called Lesbos, which was the epicenter of that whole migrant crisis. And I guess I was just so inspired by the local communities and how they'd reached out and, and lifted up those people that were coming on boats. And um, and the, the numbers were, you know, huge compared to the very small numbers that were arriving here. And I was also just starting to become aware of uh, the hardline policy that the um, the federal government implemented here in the middle of 2013. Yeah, because it's like, oh, it's happening over there. And I said, no, it's happening here. That's right. And it was happening here on such a small scale, and yet we went to such great lengths 
um, to develop this regime that was going to harm such a small number of people. It was, you know, we went to a lot of trouble to inflict suffering on this very small number while in the rest of the world, uh, it was all very large scale and no one else was doing something like that. So I decided to come when I got back to try and share some of those stories. And I realized that painting about them really wasn't going to cut it. Yeah. Uh, so I decided to try and use video um, and because a lot more people are going to have access to it. And that's really how my journey began with film, I suppose, mm -hmm. but also my journey with thinking about issues around forced displacement and trying to make a contribution to changing the policy here, which is, was really has really been an indefensible, unforgivable uh, political policy over the last 10 years. Yeah, don't worry, I do have a question on that a little bit. <laughs> um, uh, but I think I think part of the important um, the important thing that you talk about is your experience. You know, <laughs> you know, you can, you can read all of the reports and that sort of thing, but to actually have experience and to you know have people that you knew in Greece and you know get to understand and I guess humanize and bring a face to the struggle as well. And I want to focus a little bit, like coming to freedom is beautiful now. Um, I want to focus uh, on two uh, two quotes, one each, um, that I picked from the documentary. Obviously, no spoilers, but there's some joy as well, which is always <laughs> very nice. Um, but in regards to the quotes, we have Fahad saying, art and music is part of my resistance. Yes. Without that, I couldn't survive. Hmm. Yeah. Well, um, as an artist myself, one of the most fascinating things for me in making the film and getting to know Farhad and Moz, um, because they're both very talented artists, musicians, poets, um, getting to understand how they actually use their art um, in their circumstances, in their situation, yeah. um, how in practice art was really powerful for them. I mean, in the first place, it helped them to find some tranquility to transport themselves away from this horrendous environment that they are existing in on a daily basis. Uh, secondly, they used it to engage in peaceful struggle. You know, they wrote songs and made paintings um, about the situation against the policy using their art. And thirdly, through their art, they were able to make big connections with many artists and creative people on the outside in Australia and build networks that way. So art really was the crux of their their resistance, their survival, and their connections that they made um, through all that time they were on Manus. So for me, understanding that and seeing how it actually was true in practice for them mm -hmm. was probably one of the most compelling parts of my experience of making the film and getting to know them. Yeah, and, and in my opinion, the best art is a reflection of culture or the reluctance of changing sort of culture so it was definitely felt throughout and I think that speaks to the beauty of how important art is it's not some superfluous sort of thing that doesn't really matter and isn't <laughs> integral to who we are in our human experience but talking about Moss um, there's a quote and this one is a bit more heavier but he was talking about how if he or, you know, if anyone else was feeling unwell in response to any sort of health issues, it wasn't necessarily given the same sort of care, um, you know, maybe even just Panadol when it's really sort of serious sort of conditions. Mm -hmm. And Moss talks about they wanted to target our resistance so we would just give up and go home. Yeah. Well, they basically were placed in a, in a situation where the whole regime was set up to exert pressure on them in every single way at every level on a daily basis to humiliate them, mm -hmm. to make sure that they had absolutely no choices in their life, to, you know, they were called numbers instead of names uh, in regard to, you know, Moz talking about Panadol. I mean, they really, really couldn't care less about treating medical conditions yeah. and probably one of the most common conditions that um, detainees developed on Manus was uh, psychological issues and trauma from the experience of detention. Mm -hmm. Yet there was no infrastructure or resources directed to uh, treating people in that situation, you know, and that was very deliberate. Um, and as you said, the whole thing was to make them feel so much pressure to be so unwell in every way that they would rather maybe go back to their home country, even if their life was in danger, rather than continue on in the situation they were. That was the 
that was all very deliberate and consciously part of the architecture of that policy. Yeah, and I, that, that kind of comes to a question, you know, we talk about art and we talk about creativity. What is it like? I guess it is creativity, but it's also displaying lives as they are. How is it balancing that and trying to enforce something as rigid as policy in Australia? You mean um, you mean with the film or? Yeah, like how, because you're making this film and you're also pushing for change in policy, yeah. but they're very much opposites of the way in which they're operating. You know, you have oh, the big sort of machine and the reluctance of changing <laughs> policy or acknowledging, you know, the report that was released most recently, not not necessarily addressing everything that's been raised as well. You know, that sort of balance, because there's obviously a change that's happening, but the rigidity is absolutely present too. Yeah, well, I, I guess, you know, for a lot of Australians, like as you mentioned um, at the beginning of, uh, you know, of the interview, it is a confrontational subject. And it's difficult for Australians to to listen to you know what happened or or to find out what happened. Mm-hmm. They don't have to do that. I mean, you know, they you know they they're free not to listen. So I guess one of the things about a film like this was to not shy away from um, revealing and conveying to the audience what happened, mm-hmm. but at the same time, for me, make the film about how art and and hope. And positivity, which was all very authentic, um, was really the 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 best way to deal with it for those two guys. And that's why I think the film, even though it's dealing with such a difficult subject, and those guys have really been through so much, and I you know I respect them so so greatly. Uh, the film itself really uh, a a film that's that's uplifting. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't want to make a film that was that that was all about what happened. Um, I wanted to make a film about how two uh, individual people whose stories they share um, found ways through love and uh, peaceful resistance to um, fight the policy, you know, and that's very inspirational. And I really wanted to make it a film that does inspire people and also show the human face of this whole, um, you know, this whole heinous situation. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, there's there's definitely, I think um, this is more of a filmmaking sort of question. How is it balancing the tonality? Because as much as there is joy, this is a very heavy sort of topic. So, you know, these beautiful sort of quotes that we get um, from both of the guys to, you know, the really sort of heavy sort of moments. What is that like building that sort of balance for this film? Well, it's so challenging, really, because... In a way, you can't really understand um, the breadth of their achievement to to remain so positive and to, and to survive um, to survive uh, all those years of detention under such brutal conditions. If you don't understand some of the facts, mm-hmm. so you have to provide some context, but at the same time, you don't want to bog the film down just in that. Yeah. Um, so that was probably one of the most challenging parts of creating this film was to find a, a, a balance between talking about um, the circumstances they were in and then concentrating on, on, on the way they dealt with it and, and inspiring people through their own personal stories. That, that, was, that was really, really difficult. I also really didn't want to get bogged down too much in politics. So I guess the device I used for that in the film was to try and um, talk about the pol- politics in one six-minute sequence yeah. A kind of montage of historical events to try and give people a, a kind of a picture of what happened, mm-hmm. and then let, put the politics to one side. Really, um, that was how I decided to do it. I mean, I think I, I I think maybe I might have kind of found the right balance. I'm not sure, but um, yeah, that definitely was was very very hard. Mm. Yeah, I absolutely believed you found that balance. We we were taken through that journey and. You know, there were definitely moments of levity just in their journey of support yeah. as well. Um, yeah. I'm going to wrap up with our final question, if that's okay. Sure. So we finish off our reviews with a recommendation. So what would you pair with Freedom is Beautiful as a double feature? Uh, 
Well, I guess one of the most inspiring films that I've ever seen in this same space is a documentary called Fosama, um, which is the story of a, um, of a couple who uh, fled the Syrian conflict uh, and Sama was the name of their daughter. Uh-huh. Uh, and that film is uh, a chilling and beautiful film about humanity mm-hmm. and I think um, a very inspirational film for anyone who wants to try and feel uh, what it's like to be in that conflict mm-hmm. and to survive and to be helping people all the while and then finally make it to safety. That would be my, I guess, my my pairing film because mm-hmm. it was certainly a major inspiration for me. Yeah, and it's it's definitely important um, to highlight that as well. But thank you so much, Angus, for your time. It's a beautiful, gorgeous film, Sydney Film Festival and also uh, Melbourne Documentary Film Festival coming up. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me, Katie. Great talking to you.